for our meeting this evening. This is the Town of Pittsburgh Board of Commissioners meeting for April the 11th, 2016. I'll call us to order and we'll begin with a moment of silence as is our custom. Crutchfield is uh, coming and going. <laughs> Other members of the staff we have tonight are Jeff Jones, our planning director, Fred Royal, our town engineer. There's Percy Crutchfield coming in. Um, um, and joining us tonight for the first time, Heather Meach, our commander. And I missed any other staff. Uh, our first order of business then would be to have a motion to approve the agenda as it is stated. And is there such a motion? Second. Moved by Beth Foley, seconded by Michael Fierco. Those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Unanimous. The consent agenda tonight consists of minutes of March 28th regular meeting. The approval of a uh, designation for authorized signatories uh, for the town of Pittsburgh, a resolution to temporarily close Chatham Street for a high school boosters for a uh, fundraiser, and setting a public hearing for April 25th for the property at 68 Fayetteville Street. Is there any <coughs> modification to the consent agenda? If not, is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Motion, motion to approve by Michael Fiocco, seconded by Jay Farrell. Those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? It's unanimous. There are, there is, no one signed up for the public expression speakers uh, portion of our meeting tonight. And so, We'll proceed then into the ceremonial uh, section of our meeting. There are three proclamations and resolutions coming before the board tonight. Um, the first is a proclamation in support of Sexual Assault Awareness Month, and I will read that proclamation. Whereas Sexual Assault Awareness Month is intended to draw attention to the fact that sexual violence is widespread and has public health implications for every community member. And whereas rape, sexual assault, and sexual harassment impact our <coughs> community, as seen by statistics indicating that one in five women and one in 71 men will be raped at some point during their lives, and whereas Child sexual abuse prevention must be a priority to confront the reality that one in six boys and one in four girls will experience a sexual assault before the age of 18. And whereas, young people experience heightened rates of sexual violence in youth between the ages of 12 and 17, or two and a half times more likely to be victims of rape or sexual assault. And whereas, we must work together to educate our community about sexual violence pre pre prevention, support survivors, and speak out against harmful attitudes and actions. 
and whereas, with leadership and dedication and encouragement, there is evidence that we can be successful in preventing sexual violence through increased education, awareness, and community involvement. And whereas, family violence and rape crisis services have served Chatham County residents for over 34 years, promoting peaceful homes, building safe communities, and empowering individuals and families to heal from domestic and sexual violence. And whereas, the town of Pittsburgh strongly supports the efforts of national, state, and local partners and of every citizen to actively engage in public and private efforts to prevent sexual violence. It is time for all of us to start conversations, take appropriate action, and support one another to create a safer environment for us all. Now therefore, I, Cindy Perry, Mayor of Pittsburgh, join advocates and communities across the country in playing an active role to prevent sexual violence. And I do hereby proclaim April 2016 as Sexual Assault Awareness Month. In witness whereof, I appear unto set my hand and cause the official seal of the town of Pittsburgh to be affixed this the 11th day of April 2016. Is there anyone from Red Crisis to represent tonight? Thank you. Teddy Carter. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you. Our second proclamation, um, I met with members of uh, Duke Energy this past week and they asked us to uh, do a proclamation in support of Linesman Appreciation Day. And I will be um, speaking to Chatham County Duke Linesman on Monday, I believe it is, uh, at their breakfast. So, um, so here's the reading of the proclamation. Whereas linesmen are often first responders during storms and other catastrophic events, working to make the scene safe for other public safety heroes, and whereas linesmen work with thousands of volts of electricity high atop power lines 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, to keep electricity flowing, and whereas linemen must often work under dangerous conditions, far from their families, to construct and maintain the energy infrastructure of the United States. And whereas, linesmen put their lives on the line every day with little recognition from the community regarding the danger of their work. Now therefore, I, Cindy S. Perry, Mayor of the Town of Pittsburgh, on behalf of the Town Board of Commissioners and our citizens, do hereby proclaim April 18, 2016, as Lineman Appreciation Day in the Town of Pittsburgh and thank the linemen of Duke Energy for all they do for our citizens. This, the 11th day of April, 2016. Is there anyone here from Duke Power, Duke Energy? All right. I'll deliver this then at the breakfast upcoming um, to, to the, um, uh, the linesmen of Chatham County. <coughs> Our next is a resolution <coughs> honoring Lucille Marie Gilly, and I would like to recognize before I read it uh, that we have Lucille's daughter, Deborah Gilly, okay. and her grandson, um, Caden. Are you a Gilly also? No. What's your last name? Flynn. Flynn. Okay. And we're honored to have them here. They drove up from South Carolina today for the reading and the presentation of this resolution. This is a resolution honoring Marie, Lucille Marie Gilly, August 12, 1932 to August 25, 2014. Whereas Lucille Marie Gilly was born in Medford, Massachusetts and was educated as a nurse in Summerfield, Massachusetts, Lucille Gilly worked as a home health and hospice nurse for the terminally ill patients in Cape Cod, Massachusetts, and came to North Carolina, where she lived in Farrington with her husband, Robert Gilly, for over 10 years. After her husband's death, she lived on Hillsborough Street in the town of Pittsburgh and worked at the dialysis center at Chatham Mills. Whereas Lucille Marie Gilly 
has always cared about and cared for people's health and safety. And whereas Marie, Lucille Marie Gilly became particularly concerned about the safety of people crossing Hillsborough Street going to shops or offices at Chatham Mills, and whereas Lucille Marie Gilly became a strong advocate for safety in that pedestrian crossing at the mill, and whereas town residents and town officials became aware of Lucille Marie Gilly's concerns, and in conjunction with her, they advocated to the North Carolina Department of Transportation for a safer crossing at the mill. And whereas, after years of advocacy, Lucille Marie Gilly's concerns about a crosswalk were rewarded with the Department of Transportation installing a well-marked crosswalk, warning signs, and a safety buffer for the residents of the town of Pittsburgh. And whereas Lucille Marie Gilly's daughter, Deborah Gilly, is in attendance tonight for the honoring of her mother's advocacy for the safety of the residents and visitors to the town of Pittsburgh, and this resolution shall be entered into the public records of the town of Pittsburgh and a copy given to Deborah Gilly. Therefore, be it resolved that the town of Pittsburgh thanks Lucille Marie Gilly posthumously by presenting this resolution to her daughter, Deborah Gilly, with the profound appreciation of the town, its residents, visitors, and officials for the tireless work done by Lucille Marie Gilly for the safety of pedestrians in our town adopted this 11th day of April 2016. And because this is a resolution and not a proclamation, I'd ask if there is, uh, if the board uh, would put a motion forward to adopt this resolution. So moved. Second. Excellent. Um, the motion was made by Pamela Baldwin, seconded by Bette Wilson Foley. Those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Chatham Business Services 
uh, just off the courthouse circle. And on the 9th of April, I attended the uh, Future Farmers of America breakfast uh, at the Kiwanis site. Are there other reports to be had about um, climate change or Triangle J or the Downtown Business Association? No, but I can mention just the, the Main Street program in conjunction with the PBA will be having a presentation uh, tomorrow night at the Roadhouse at 6.30 uh, on the designs for the Downtown Vision Plan for the first four projects of that uh, plan. And I was just going to throw out that today uh, there was a piano that was painted by a local artist that was put in place uh, next to um, Pittsburgh Toys and the, uh, the music shop so that would be a part of downtown. So that was kind of exciting. I've been exchanging emails with the artist. There it is. <laughs> is is it a permanent installation? It's permanent. It's available for anybody that wants to come by and play the piano. I love it. It's just so good for me. <coughs> And will it come in at night, I guess? Um, I, I'm not clear about that. It's my impression that it's going to stay there. Any time that somebody feels the urge to come in, they'll come in. If it's painted by an artist in Farrington, um, she's been working on it for several months, and um, she's very excited about this. And, um, I guess she's been working with Paul Horn on this project. Oh, that's wonderful. All right. Any other reports? Um, under old business, our first item is the resolution in support of the repeal of House Bill 2. You received one in your packet, and then uh, Michael Fiocco has given us another um, red line version um, to, uh, to look at, which... Um, uh, Michael, do you want to sort of give an idea of the changes that you've made since we just got this just a few minutes ago? Yeah, um, really, it um, was, were not substantive edits. I um, appreciate you taking the initiative and making this um, happen. Um, but I think uh, the two pieces that I added that I thought were important were the final two, whereas, and they read, whereas the Pittsburgh is a community dedicated to the principles of quality, non-discrimination, and full inclusion and engagement by any resident, visitor, or guest, and the civil rights, benefits, and privileges of all citizens, and whereas the town of Pittsburgh is a municipal corporation of the state of North Carolina, enabled and entrusted by the general statutes of North Carolina to preside over the health, safety, and welfare of its residents and local control over its own affairs should not be superseded by the General Assembly. Uh, now, therefore, be it resolved. And um, the only thing else I added there was just to ask uh, uh, the clerk, Ms. Lloyd, to forward this uh, resolution if adopted to uh, the governor, the speaker, and President Pro Tem uh, of uh, North Carolina and our Chatham County delegation so that they can uh, at least hear us. Shall we open the floor for discussion here among the board? I very much appreciate both your efforts in preparing this. Um, uh, I'm a little bit concerned and would like to ask Mr. Messick. Uh, to share thoughts with us about um, is it the Dillon rule um, and where where we do have power where we don't have power where it's limited by the legislature and so on and so forth well in general I mean you said it pretty clearly um, the legislature has given local governments municipalities and counties certain powers um, and Two weeks ago, they took away some of those powers, um, and you know we are a government of limited powers. And town, I mean, towns in North Carolina have fewer now than they did two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. so, I think the thrust of the, of the resolution is to um, ask the General Assembly to you know to repeal the law. And, you know, if you want to quibble about some of the whereas's in terms of justification for that. Um, 
you know, some are more uh, are clearer than others to me. Um, but clearly, it limited the power of local governments to do certain things, mm -hmm. and it limited the power of the people of North Carolina to do certain other things. For mm -hmm. example, to you know, file a lawsuit in North Carolina over employment discrimination. Um, but um, it, it, it is, I guess, a um, sound in, in the wilderness if you choose to speak. Whether or not anybody listens is another matter. Right. Well, and one thing I'm sure of is if we do not speak, we will not be heard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I absolutely and emphatically want this board to, to speak out uh, in opposition to this really offensive law. Um, I feel like it's a an extreme <coughs> overreach uh, by folks who presume to support small government uh, becoming very big government intruding into local affairs and um, removing civil rights. Um, I, I, I guess I just wonder if if, uh, if we would want to have it um, stronger, clearer, better legal support for whereas clauses or if its value is mainly uh, in, uh, in its emphasis. I think I shared some comments with the, the mayor when, when I saw her version of it. I mean, clearly some of those are right on. And I mean, I question whether or not the local governments have the authority to set minimum wages in general in North Carolina, or ever did. So I'm not sure. Even if that's no longer the case, I'm not sure you ever had that power. Um, and there may be some question about <laughs> if I could focus on the thing on the wall. Uh, <laughs> so I'm moving target. Um, and, and, I, and then there may be some others that are that are questionable, but clearly, you know, the first, the second, um, and, and third are, are clearly on point. Um, the last, I mean, the, the next to last is one I would question more than anything else in that way. Uh, I'll, I'll say what I gotta say. You know, I questioned this House Bill too several times. I read it over multiple times. Um, what we have here is is an excellent resolution, but what the public is seeing on the media is nothing like this right here. It's all about the uh, the bathroom signage, the uh, the transgender, all this and. Uh, you know, it has nothing regarding the uh, discrimination from wages, labor laws, or anything that is coming up in the media, and that's that's my problem. I cannot, I really don't. I would really like to see this bill go back to the high, to the general assembly for repeal or what how this domestic uh, that needs to be said. But um, you know, I just think we're getting um, we'd be sending out. Uh, Maybe not negative, uh, not saying negative, but uh, I kind of lost the words. I just mean maybe I'm, I don't want the media to take what we're having here and go with it like they're doing now. I really, uh, this was on the board, right on the uh, Channel 5, Channel 2, whatever. I think it would be a lot less uh, problems at the state capitol right now. I mean, all these Everybody's in there. That's like a smoke screen to yeah. put these things in so that people get to right. focus on that aspect and they don't notice the other things. That, that should have been a separate bill. I, I feel like. Yeah. I think that your concerns are definitely very, very important. And I do agree with that in reference to what this bill will change it into the thing. However, when, it, when there's a situation where someone did not bring a civil action because of discrimination, I would make a problem with that. And some of the other things about how local governments can't do this, can't do that, and they have continuously 
been taking a lot of the things that the local government have been able to do uh, that's been ongoing now for a while. So I think it's very important for us to make a statement in reference to even if it does not change anything, it's still we have to stand up and make a statement about we don't want you discriminating against people. We have to be concerned about that. And as a local government, a lot of things that we try to do, the legislature has no idea what's going on in each individual city or county. So I don't see how they can have that overreaching. But regardless, I do definitely that. Well, I think one of the most frustrating things about the bill to me, or the law, is that in the name of a policy in North Carolina of non-discrimination, uh, there are many groups of people who are excluded from having any protection against discrimination, and then the small set of group, the small group of people who are protected, have no means by which to have recourse in the state of North Carolina because this far removed that recourse. Right. right. So I think it's extremely troubling, and the fact that you know folks want to focus on the scintillating aspects of the bathroom issue. Um, it's unfortunate. I have one question. Mr. Messick, is it possible that uh, the General Assembly goes back in the session that this would come back up? It's certainly possible that anything could come back up. I have to put words in your mouth, but I think that you were, you were speaking, this resolution decries the whole HB2. And you're saying, I think, that some people think that there are at least parts of it that might be acceptable. I don't know if anybody thinks. Okay. Oh, yeah, right, yeah. Excuse me, yes, you're right about that, yes. But it, what I was trying to say, I guess, is the main thing that I see on there that comes out in the paper and everywhere else is the restroom, you know, problem. Well, this resolution does not try to address the distinctions between one section of the law and another section of the law. This is against the whole law. So if you were interested in something that would be more specific as to the different provisions of the law, then this resolution would need to be changed to accommodate that. Just because we're asking for the bill to be repealed in its entirety. Is right. that okay? there is a baby in the bathroom, you throw it out Well, I think we've appropriately prioritized this. Um, the uh, limits and elimination of the ability to bring civil actions for actual discrimination um, being right there at the top. Uh, I really think that's the most profound piece in this legislation the farthest reaching is going to affect the greatest number of North Carolinians. <coughs> and um, yeah, I really do think that there was, there was quite a lot of smokescreen, uh, some effort to uh, to rile up certain bases with with this uh, bathroom issue. Not to minimize those concerns. But, uh, it's a bit of a Trojan horse because it was really several days as I was reading the media, the social media, it was several days before it came out that these uh, severe constraints on the ability to uh, take civil action, that that came, came to light. So they were successful in getting all of the hullabaloo about the bathrooms to distract us. Well, I, I strongly support the, the resolution as, as it's been revised. Um, and if, if we're, if I'm sensing a consensus, <coughs> Commissioner Farrell, do you have additional concerns? Uh, not this time, I guess. Maybe we should thank this for a couple of weeks. If the board is ready to vote, then is there a motion to be made? I make a motion that we approve the resolution uh, to repeal House Bill Number Two. Second. Motion.
motion made by Michael Fiocco, seconded by Bette Wilson Foley. And I assume you're aware of the revised version. Clarify the revised version. Revised version. Mm -hmm. Those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, aye. 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 Those opposed? Uh, nay. And just on the count of uh, just the media, that's the only reason I have any problem is, is the media. And I, I apologize for that. That's what I did. Thank you. We, we are, we share your concern in many respects. Thank you. So the, um, the resolution passes in. So Alice Lloyd, if you will um, send a copy on to the indicated persons then. Um, we have under old business our second item, natural resource tools for small towns. Captain Denninger. You were here a few weeks ago talking about. Um, no, that was a Lankiosa. Well, that's right, it was. Yeah, as you know, people continue to mix us up, which is fine. I really love a Lank. Um, but yeah, that was. Um, so, anyways, good, good evening, Mayor, Board of Commissioners, and town staff. I do want to thank you for your time this evening and for all the work and time that you give to the Pittsburgh community. I wanted to come before you this evening to show my appreciation and the appreciation of all the partners of the Natural Resource Planning Tools for Pittsburgh Project uh, for the town's involvement in this project. Um, actually, Nancy Stairs uh, from the Urban Community Forestry Program of the North Carolina Forestry Service and Brooke Massa from the North Carolina Wildlife Resource Commission are here as well. And we wanted to come in particular to present you with this case study and to show you that it was done. <laughs> but uh, this case study um, is, is done to, was done to document the work that we've done here in Pittsburgh so that it can be used as a model for other communities, especially other small towns in North Carolina that are facing um, development pressures. Um, so the case study, it documents the planning tools process that was used for this project, um, as well as some of the lessons learned. Um, that's at, at the end of the case study. Um, and lessons such as identifying partners, um, how important that is, identifying partners that, uh, with expertise and with um, ties to the community. Um, in addition to uh, documenting the process, it goes through all the steps that we, we did in Pittsburgh, and um, it also shows the planning tools that were developed for Pittsburgh. Uh, and those planning tools are described in the case study, and they're also documented in the appendices. Um, there's a summary report for each one of the planning tools, and those are the tools of the Biodiversity and Wildlife Habitat Assessment we did for Pittsburgh, the land cover change analysis and urban tree assessment, and that include the ecosystem service analysis, the strategies for incorporating green infrastructure, 
um, developing tree ordinances in North Carolina, the guidance documents. Um, the summary of the natural resource conservation ordinance recommendations for Pittsburgh and the future property tax revenues and co-benefits of conservation, um, as well as uh, a list of possible funding sources for this type of project. Um, so those are all these appendices in the back. And then also, um, not in this document, but there are the, um, I wanted to remind you that there are the full reports of the land cover change analysis um, that includes the ecosystem service analysis and also a full report of the um, future property tax revenues and co-benefits of conservation. And those are available on the Chatham Conservation Partnership wiki site. And especially that economic analysis, that second one, um, the final report of that is now available on the wiki site. Um, the summary document for that is included in the appendix um, as appendix F. One of the ones I mentioned. And then also at the end of the case study, I think this is, is useful to note, is a list of the resource internet sites that were used um, throughout the case study. In particular, note that the, um, the developing tree protection ordinances in North Carolina, that is one of the um, planning tools that we actually developed as part of this project and that's available on the North Carolina Forestry Service website as well as also on the Chatham Conservation Partnership website. The Chatham Conservation Partnership wiki site includes all of this information. And then the Model Natural Resource Conservation Ordinance that we reviewed and made recommendations for. That is part of the Green Growth Toolbox and that is being continually updated. They've just put out an expanded um, version of that. So that is something that we have recommendations for that when we did the Conservation Ordinance Review Committee, we developed recommendations. They've um, actually expanded that, uh, that model. So that's something that you may want to go and take a look at. They've, uh, I think, included a voluntary option that we didn't look too deeply into when we did our recommendations. <coughs> Um, so I, I think that's all I actually had to, had to say this evening, unless you have any questions. Um, Nancy, Brooke, and I are happy to answer any questions. We're also happy at any time if you have questions about this case study or the project or the recommendations that came out of, out of the work that was done. Okay. Any questions for Catherine? Yes. This could be available for other families. Yes. Can and you it, tell me how they would go about getting it? Because I'm going to bring this to Triangle J. Okay. Well, okay. That's great. Um, and, and actually, I'm doing uh, a water resource planning grant um, with Triangle J right now for, um, for Siler City. So they've seen this a little bit, but probably not everybody at Triangle J has. So that's great. Um, well, it's on the Chatham Conservation Partnership wiki okay. site. That would be the easiest place to go. But I know that it's also the North Carolina Forestry Service and the Wildlife Resource Commission are using it as well. Um, I'm just not exactly sure where they... Mm -hmm. It has all the appendix. And, and not only does it... I mean, we have on the wiki site, um, and it's, it's given in here, um, yeah, but on, on the um, wiki site for the Chatham Conservation Partnership, not only do we have this case study, but we have all the documentation and maps and presentations and stuff that were given throughout the project are um, documented on that wiki site. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. It was a great question. Other questions? Thank you again for the tremendous amount of work that went into this. <coughs> no, it was a pleasure to do. Um, you know, this being my community, it's, I was lucky to get to do this. Thank you. Thank you. We'll progress now to new business. 
Uh, next is the site plan review for Starlight Mead. Jeff Jones will be leading us in that. Thank you, Mayor, members of the board. Um, tonight we have a we have a site plan uh, for uh, a re review by the town board. It is for a production facility for Starlight Meadery. Um, they are proposing to build two buildings at the um, sort of at the end of Lorax Lane, uh, near the curve that goes down into the industrial um, site down there, the multi-use site down there. Um, Two buildings are being proposed, a production facility and a retail store tasting room facility. Both uh, combined a little over 6,300 square feet. Um, and the planning board uh, reviewed this at their March 7th meeting and recommended approval. We have, uh, this is the tasting room uh, slash retail store area. And this is the production uh, view here. And you can see if you go, if I go, go back. You may not be able to go back. There we go. Yeah. So in the distance, if you at the bottom um, right hand side, you can see the production facility uh, on, the, on the area adjacent to the tasting room uh, retail space. Um, as part of this uh, request tonight, there is a sewer allocation request uh, for, for the uh, facility. And I wanted to amend the, the request. The, the applicant um, has taken another look at what their, what their need is. Um, I know in the staff report we have uh, 663 gallons per day. Was a based off of a, a bar facility, and that is not what they're going to be. They're more of a retail store without food. Is kind of what they're what they're classifying themselves. And that request comes down to about 267.75 uh, gallons per day. Um, we might want to just round that up to 270, just to be on the safe side. Uh, but 270 uh, is what. Town engineer and myself um, are requesting, and we're in, a, in agreement that that would be a better number for this facility. I want to go back uh, one to, to the um, to the site plan. I, I over I went over um, the buildings themselves, but I do want to touch on the parking agreement that is. Um, that is for this facility and for the entire area down there. Um, there are multiple uses going on in this, this area that share a parking area. Within the zoning um, ordinances, a use can utilize parking that is within 200 feet of their front door. We have an agreement that is uh, been given to us and, and states that there will be a perpetual agreement for parking within the area uh, within 200 feet of this facility um, to serve this and other other areas. Um, that was a point of discussion with the planning board. They wanted to make sure that that was going to be enough parking for them. Um, applicant indicated that it was. Um, there are a couple of handicap and more accessible sites, uh, parking locations near the facility. Um, but for general purpose parking, they're going to be within 200 feet. Um, that parking within 200 feet is not paved. Um, it's not currently paved, and it's no requirement to, to pave that as well. Um, I can answer any questions that you may have. Um, applicant is here. Later. Are there questions from the board? I have questions, maybe uh, less relevant to the immediate agenda item <coughs> and more uh, concern uh, to our broader uh, unified development ordinance process. Okay. 
Um, at the planning board, I don't recall hearing any discussion of stormwater runoff. Um, from my education, perhaps other board members would appreciate it as well, how would this size up under what we have proposed in the current draft UDO? So stormwater is going to be handled the exact same way that it is currently. There's no change to that. Okay. Um, there may be some clarification of when stormwater is applied for, but as I understand it, Fred, there's there's no change to stormwater regulations that we're proposing uh, moving forward. Okay. Yeah, I think it's my understanding of the planning board meeting, I think, I think that question did come up. Yeah. The, the other project. sites. Yeah, the answer was the fact that it was disturbing less than an acre of land. Right. Okay. So right. it's exempt. Yeah. Okay. Any questions? Okay. Thank you. Well, I'll just speak. Oh, excuse me. Just one question. I'm Mr. Jones. I'll be here. We the question was asked and the applicant indicated that the, the deliveries and use of um, company vehicles would be handled where they could be parked at a location that would not impede general purpose parking for the site uh, and that that deliveries are, are not at a scale that you would think at, at for a for production facility. Mr. Jones, is the although the tasting room and the and the uh, manufacturing facility don't take more than a acre of disturbed uh, for the purposes of stormwater, is isn't there a cumulative effect as a result of all the other uses down there? I think those uses have been there for quite some time, and those would all be grandfathered in. Thank you. Further questions? Further discussion? I'll offer some discussion in support of the initiative. I'm really excited about the growth that you've experienced and your prospects for further growth. Um, and uh, proud of the work that y'all have done and really excited about this new development um, in an area of town which uh, is really special. And it's, there's a lot of really neat, interesting things going on down there. I'm mindful that this is now two facilities that will be serving alcohol in that, in that area. And I wouldn't be at all surprised to sometime in the future see a proposal for food service. And perhaps that might even be in the best interest of the public if we see someone come forward with a restaurant proposal or uh, what have you. Uh, yeah, I'm just speaking off the top of my head. I understand there is a food truck. It's um, working out of a kitchen down there. Um, again, part of the really neat things that are, that are happening down at uh, Lorax Lane. Uh, I support the proposal. Thank you. Very excited. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Michael Fiecko, seconded by Bet Wilson Foley. Those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 The motion again, are you asking me to restate it? No, I'm on the motion on the allocation as well. Okay. Oh, okay. 270. Okay. And a motion to uh, grant 270 gallons per day uh, with the condition that construction starts within one year. Those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Thank, Thank you, Board. <coughs> We are at the point where we're having now manager's update on projects, um, updates and reports. Brian Grusak. Uh, thanks, Madam Mayor. I, uh, I will be brief. Uh, the um, additional elements, uh, to my knowledge, we still haven't, haven't received them. Um, I don't know if uh, your staff has additional feedback. Otherwise, the, the remainder of the timeline would, would still be intact as far as, as far as small area plans are concerned. The, the review of the small area plans would be subsequent to the review of the initial elements after we receive those. Uh, 
uh, engineering planning uh, office space. Uh, I had also included in your packet a handy, uh, a handy map of the uh, of the facility uh, or the location of the facility that we're using for public consumption. It shows relation to some of the other public buildings. Um, we have that, I believe, on the website. We've been distributing it as well. Um, we should have signage up soon. Uh, we'll be approved by, uh, approved by the building owner as well. So, um, so hopefully, I, by the, the level of uh, traffic, I think that the office has received that uh, even in advance of the flyer, I think people are, are realizing uh, where our new offices are at. So, uh, so that, uh, I think, is transitioning nicely. I have a quick question on the, um, that those parking spaces, those three are probably parking spaces around the back side that are still muddy. Yeah, we've been, we've been given a, a promise, I guess, by the, yeah. by the, the uh, property owner that those will be uh, paved within the next few weeks. Correct. I don't know if Mr. Messick has heard any of that, but we've had conversations with the building owner's attorney as well. So. Okay. We help for I think it's going to be helpful yeah. for folks visiting. Uh, finance, uh, finance director, uh, uh, as, as Mayor introduced uh, uh, board and staff tonight, uh, Heather Meacham, please to have her here in the audience tonight. Uh, not, I don't know so much as the audience. Uh, she doesn't necessarily have a speaking part tonight, but I think she might next week when we have the monthly report. Uh, monthly financial report. Uh, she started last week and was actually in for a day or so a week before just to get the paperwork started. Uh, she's been picking up on things really quick. Uh, it's already uh, secured. Um, we had conversations with the auditor uh, who got coming audit and uh, wants to get uh, wants to get started on that. Of course, has been walking through some of uh, some of the day to day stuff uh, and um, and uh, we've started work on. The basics of the budget as well. So um, no rest, uh, no rest for the wicked, I guess. Uh, we're going to get started, and, and we're glad to have Heather aboard. And uh, she's she's fit for this. Planner two hiring, um, as I indicated, uh, I indicated in the um, in my report that we would be uh, accepting resumes until April one, and then we'd be reviewing uh, them over the course of the following week or so, uh, and then selecting. Uh, selecting a candidate following that. I think uh, we've, after reviewing the resumes, I think we want to, uh, Mr. Jones and I want to talk a little bit more, uh, possibly open up uh, the application process again and see what else we can get. I've been really fortunate, I think, on some of some of our recent hires. Uh, I think maybe this is a good good chance to maybe sit back and make, make sure that uh, uh, we continue to get it right. Uh, so uh, I think maybe a, a we haven't really discussed the timeline, timeline but uh, maybe a few more weeks to take a look at uh, what else we can possibly get um, and review and take it from there. Um, again, the, the, the possibility um, still exists that, that we could have a successful candidate start working uh, in time to provide assistance with the need of the small area plan review. I think that's kind of what, what our overarching goal is. Uh, you don't have to mention little things like UDO and stuff like that. <laughs> Uh, downtown Vision, uh, Commissioner Fioco mentioned that the uh, 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 traffic circle, uh, I'll say a traffic circle meeting, uh, actually Downtown Vision, but it's a lot of, a lot of discussion taking place about the uh, traffic circle uh, tomorrow uh, at the Roadhouse at 6.30 p.m. Uh, discuss the most recent design of the traffic circle. Uh, Mr. Royal, the town engineer, will also be there uh, to talk about uh, some uh, uh, project that he's been working on uh, that uh, I believe can, can coincide and fit nicely with the design of the traffic circle to place the stormwater pest management practice control, essentially a stormwater control on the northwest, uh, strange as this sounds, northwest corner of the circle. Uh, and uh, I think I think the idea of being there, go ahead and throw something at me if I get, if I get off pace here, but. Uh, I think the idea there being to, to kind of get, get this what was called a 60% dry, and we have that available currently, and, and we'll be discussing tomorrow night the 60% dry, uh, and see how that fits with uh, some of the drying that uh, some of the design work that Kimberly Moore uh, has put in for DOT review, uh, 
and if there is a fit there, then, then great, we can move forward. If there isn't a fit, what can we do to solve it? Um, where would we go from there? Um, so I, uh, really eager, I think, to, to, to get into that and see where uh, where we can take that. So uh, again, 6:30 tomorrow night. Um, the, uh, uh, Kimley Horn is is really kind of presenting the information. Um, Fred will be presenting. Uh, his overview of the BMP, and then uh, uh, we'll be there to, to help otherwise, and just uh, you know, kind of have not really a town hall meeting, but to get reaction and feedback from all those who, who attend. Chatham County Affordable Housing, we talked about that a little bit earlier. Uh, the county manager had forwarded over to me a uh, piece that I included in the FYI portion of the agenda packet. Uh, uh, with, for a cost estimate um, that they had received um, through work with, uh, with Triangle J, um, and the idea being that it would be a 12-month, uh, essentially a 12-month process to help uh, to help assemble uh, the committee, put together um, put together uh, challenges, opportunities, overview, best practices, and recommend strategies. And I think at the bottom, uh, at the bottom of the page. You that the cost shares among local governments would need to be determined. Um, that, uh, my understanding, according to the county manager, is, is, uh, is not something that they're seeking at this time. So this dollar figure uh, isn't something that they're looking to be split, split in thirds or um, you know, half or eighths or anything other than, um, I believe, at this point in time, the county actually putting the bill for that. There was also some discussion at the time about uh, about some possible review of uh, if we had received the affordable elements component of the Chatham Park additional uh, uh, excuse me the affordable housing element of the Chatham Park additional elements if there would be a possibility to have some third party review of that uh, this estimate does not uh, include that but is certainly something that uh, as as we approach you know that issue we could we can visit that with this body uh, as well. So if you have any feedback from that, let me know or uh, forward those concerns to an appropriate uh, county commissioner, uh, county manager, and so forth. And uh, the last thing I would I would talk about, I think in the last uh, in the last agenda packet, uh, I had mentioned and also included uh, an RFQ for financial advisor. Uh, I had that uh, I had that open for few weeks. Uh, I think I'm going to extend that by about a week. Uh, I've received one solid proposal. Uh, I understand that I could get another proposal yet this week. Um, and uh, so uh, I, I look forward, I think, to, to evaluating that with the assistance for a new, uh, new finance record. So uh, with that, I tap out. Any other questions or concerns you guys have? Uh, I'm happy to help. I think when Michael Fiocco and I were visiting in Sanford, uh, the Sanford Mayor Chet Mann was really uh, encouraging the use of a financial um, advisor and talking about how invaluable it had been for them in in their work uh, there in, in Sanford and Lake County. So I think I understand a little bit better the, the need and necessity for that position. Um, uh, two points of clarification. In the affordable housing piece, it makes mention of the county and town manager meeting with Triangle J staff in the future tense, February 1, 2016. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, that's, okay. I'm sorry. That's, uh, yeah, please cancel that out. Okay. Is there a meeting scheduled? For February 1st, 2016. Uh, yeah, is it a, so has I, had, I had met with okay. I had met with those Got folks. It. Got it. Okay. I'm sorry. All right. Um, the other thing about the, the vision plan, so Fred, you've got plans that are 60%. Um, have you been sharing that information with Kimley Horn? Have you guys been working together to kind of fit that thing in there? I just got them, so I can okay. them today. Have you seen it? Does it look like it's going to work, or does it look like um, it I haven't happen? looked at the latest Kimberly Horn to compare, so I haven't seen it okay. together. So. Okay. Yeah, the drawings have 60% complete, the design is 60% complete. Yeah. 
Yeah, I have. So it's more be the first time you really kind of <coughs> see you guys are fitting. <coughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm assuming we're going to be working towards having those two pieces fit together. Right. Uh, I think they're both important. So, um, who, who, who's doing the design work? <coughs> Do we have it set up so that the two teams are talking? And are you the point person? Yeah, um, NC State's our consulting design engineer, okay. so uh, any d any design changes we work with them and with whoever Sal's designer is, whoever his team is, yeah. if it became a, an issue with it, literally connect or I think touch. They're, they're probably going to touch. Yeah. I'm assuming. There's, there's not a lot of extra not space over there. Yeah. Has so anybody consulted with the landowners involved? Yeah. Chatham County. They're on board with one so of the others. So good. But they haven't seen either one of them. No, they've seen the original buyer retention design. And they have seen the downtown vision plan for Kim uh, Well, some of them have seen some of them. Well, they I want to know what happened to the building, I think. That was oh, well, that, that wasn't part of this project. Uh, yeah. It's still part of the plan. It's part of the vision plan. The vision. part of the plan. That you, the, that you all have not approved. Not part of the project. Nor has anybody else approved. No, it's all, it was stated from the very beginning. It's something that to dream about. You, but but who's dreaming? You, you all have dreamed. We did accept adopt a vision plan. You did accept the vision plan. Yeah, we adopted it. But it doesn't mean that particular project is going to happen. I think it was recognition that that's owned by the county and they would have to agree to it. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, all those things All those things were made perfectly clear that it was wrong. But, now I want to go back to, and I don't know if we have these things recorded, but I know I know most of you were there uh, the night that, that you know then Commissioner Bach I think had been reviewing the division plan and when you came across that that grassy knoll where the county administration building is, you know you kind of stepped back and and, uh, and everyone said uh, you know, Commissioner Bach, what do you think about that? He said, hey, sounds sounds fine with me. Just find us another place to live. Right, and everybody kind of laughed. I don't think it's accurate to say that there wasn't any awareness of, of, of the discussion about the game plan. And there was a time when they were trying to decide between renovating that space or improving the nature of the space. I think it's the first time that it's our beach. Well, they're going down the path of spending a lot more money on that building. Correct. It doesn't hurt to dream. They have a vision. Okay, that, that whether that circle is going to be a dream or a nightmare for some people, so you all need to be aware of that. Well, I have not heard anyone who's in favor of reducing the width of that. I'm, I'm that sure. I'm sure. That's a big concern on my street for yeah. people that I've talked to for business owners to um, local residents that come around that circle. And especially truckers. <clears throat> I mean, they just can't imagine how it's going to be to be half as as wide as it currently is. And I hope that those people are well represented tomorrow night because um, even though they've spoken to us, um, they need to be there because I don't know that the technicalities of, of T.H. Hudson's, you know, um, uh, tow trucks, but he was one of the people that complained vociferously about not not narrowing that courthouse circle. And, and if he feels that way, just Imagine how the how the big truckers feel. In that and in that vein, I do want to I do want to mention that, that we keep in mind that that the traffic circle is not the only component of uh, of the downtown vision. There were other projects that were identified within that vision as well. Um, improvements. Uh, improvements along Hillsborough Street, improvements at the intersections, um, streetscape and so forth. So I just, I, you know, I will also point out that the vision plan, that, that if, if there is a, an overwhelming negative you know, sort of public consensus reaction, so to speak, against proposed, any sort of proposed improvements that DOT would make in the traffic circle, uh, that there are other things that, uh, that that vision plan did identify as far as, as, far as possible. I had a question that came up recently from a resident. Um, there's talk again of the, the dangerous dips, uh, um, I guess they're going down the steps and then the, the old ways in front of the buildings and some other places. And we talked about that had, uh, originally that was not the first priority set. So 
we talked about moving it to make it more of a priority. Did we ever do that, or is that still? Well, that's that's how the, the, the way that that shook out in the, in the final analysis was that the, the traffic circle, I think for a variety of reasons, became became the top priority. Uh, I think the streetscape improvements and accessibility improvements are, are also prioritized, but at the point in time that the downtown vision plan was finished, those were not those were not rated as high. Right. Um, but that's but that's, that's come up several times. But that's my point. Is there are other things that we can be focusing on as well. Right. And there was a conversation with the DOT Thursday a week ago when they came back to town to talk to the county town and the, the planner, the designers, and one of the things we were trying to accomplish was getting those next three projects, which is downtown Salisbury, downtown two Hanks to get design work started on that. So we're going to keep this, this rolling so that conversation did occur. There, there are people in this town now who have disabilities yeah. after falling there and don't know about it. It's awful. Yeah. Now that's a real important piece of it. Um, there are many hazards to the disabled person. Um, and it really for <laughs> fully able people as well. Mm -hmm. And I would like to stress that I think it's important to have an open mind on the design because, um, you know, I think if you do have an open mind that you'll hear the explanation. I've heard it a couple of times and it's quite convincing that the, the circle is not going to be any disaster. It's going to be an improvement. Um, and it's really going to enhance pedestrian safety and give even yet more civic space downtown for the walking public. Now a component of this, um, and Commissioner Farrell's been harping on this for a while now, is getting a truck route around. Yes. Okay. Yeah, this is and my question. one of the projects up for a vote for funding or ranking for NCDOT funding is increasing shoulders in Highway 87. Highway 87 was the detour when the circle shut down for, for the water main project and even for uh, <coughs> fire restoration. And so the DOT has indicated that that's a likely candidate for a permanent bypass, if you will. And so if we can get the DOT to spend additional dollars on increasing the shoulders of 87, it will be that much better of a route. So that is to say that if we can get that highly ranked, get it funded, that will help contribute to these downtown improvements that, that we're trying to make. So I think working in tandem together, it can be a great improvement. Because really, we don't want the trucks that are bypassing coming through downtown. We want the trucks that are going to stop and make delivery. We want the automobiles, we want people to come and be safe, we want pedestrian activity, we want everyone to be safe downtown. But those two projects are not coupled. No, they're not. No, but timing wise they could be if we could make them. We they're not coupled, but they could occur at about the same time. Well, I think from from what I've observed, Jay, you could probably speak better to it than any of us, but from what I've observed, rush hour traffic going north to, to the Chapel Hill or wherever and then coming back home, going south in the evening, folks are not stopping. They are lining up three blocks to get through the circle, in front of your house, to get past the circle, to go home. And they're not about the stuff, even for gasoline, because they planned in advance. Um, so to get them to bypass over to 87 and go south that way, I think would be a great positive to alleviating in-town traffic, folks just going to the grocery store at the 5 o'clock hour or 
what have you. Um, so, what what what's involved, Commissioner Fioco, with accelerating or or um, emphasizing that type of bypass improvement? Our next meeting, you will have the ability to um, tell the state that you want that project accelerated. Uh, we will have the ability to rank 10 projects out of 12. Uh, Solar City, the county, and the town of Pittsburgh. We are ranking those, those projects as we speak, and we will be bringing those projects to our respective boards. We have two projects really on the list of those of those 12. One is the 87 um, shoulder project, and one is modernization of Pittsburgh Monture Road with some shoulder uh, widths uh, as well. Those are the only two projects we have on there. So we're going to, as a town, rank those, those projects fairly high. Now where they flesh out in the end is a little out, bit of out of our control because the state's going to have a, a ranking uh, system for them, and then the county and, and Solar City's going to rank their projects as well. We will need to strongly advocate if, if the board and the town feels like 87 is a uh, better route for um, for through traffic, we need to strongly advocate for that and put it on the record that the town wants that to happen. Um, and we'll be able to evaluate that in two weeks. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll bring that to you all on the 25th. I'm just going to throw out the Pittsburgh Montreal Road would also be a good um, route because it connects Highway 1 to Highway 64 and we yeah. can bypass Pittsburgh if that road is improved as well, they never even have to go to town. Mm -hmm. 902, 64. So that to me, that's also a good, good way to get trucks out of downtown. And I feel like we need to take advantage of the good relationship we have with 3M because I think I don't know what percentage of the trucks that come through are 3M, but there are a vast number. Mm -hmm. And um, and and if we could get them to take 87 around and then connect on to. Um, 64 bypass and then on to 15 501. It would just be, it, it would just be amazing. Yes. Yes. Well, ever since I heard about the changes proposed to the, the circle, the idea that, or somehow it was conveyed to me that the idea is that it's a, a calming effect to improve the safety for pedestrians, uh, my immediate question was, well, how on earth are we going to handle the congestion of traffic that's going to result from that? Because if we're slowing traffic, then we will increase congestion and, and backups there. And so um, moving some of that traffic elsewhere would be a really great thing in my book. Thank you. We're now at Commissioner Concerns. Uh, perhaps we have transmitted some of those concerns, <laughs> but uh, are there further concerns? Yeah, I have, uh, Perry, I have uh, talked to a few people over the weekend and uh, several concerns regarding the vacant homes on Main Street, Gillsburg Street, uh, unlivable, condemned, I would call. Uh, and I think you have been getting some emails. I read them. I'm concerned also. I, I drive up and down 501. I know at least 10 times on a Saturday and a Sunday to get back and forth to the restaurant and home and all like that. And I see them grass me high right now across the street from your home. I think this is something we really need to uh, address as soon as possible. But what, how we can, uh, I don't know what our condemnation um, ordinance is, if, it's, if it is. Well, I had actually spoken to Mr. Bass regarding this several years ago, and uh, it came into uh, in-depth investigation, I believe. Staff is aware we're working on that. Figuring out what, what you all as a board need to do uh, to move forward. It's, it may not be as simple as just supporting what we have mm -hmm. on the books, but that may not be, that may not solve the problem 
uh, as quickly or as timely as we would like to work back. So would it like a, a safety issue be a uh, concern or would Oh, thank you. Or anything like that? So there's several that are. Each of, those, each of those houses is so close to its neighbors that, that it does create a terrible safety issue. Yeah. And the wheels of justice or enforcement <laughs> move slowly. There, there may be things that we need to do at the town to speed those things up. But uh, we can talk about that at another time. Well, you know, we've never addressed the homeowners themselves. And, and that's first step. And I wonder if, if a well-placed and firm letter to those particular property owners would light a fire, shall we say. Unfortunate metaphor. But Mr. Messick, is, the, um, is there hope that the uh, public sale of the Atlas Boone House is going to go forward sometime soon? Do you have any word on that? Um, there was some desire to possibly have it rezoned to the O&I before that happened. I think you that that might increase the chance for sale, increase the value, but that's pending, I guess. All right. Thank you, Jay Farrell. Okay, thank you. Um, I could have gotten some calls this week about um, about some of the eyesores around town. The other one I've got I've gotten a call from someone who's concerned about signage. Um, he was really bothered by all the signs that are coming up with the flags flapping in the breeze, and it wasn't clear if he meant in town or in the county. So um, I haven't had a chance to run around and see if there are flags, but I, I wasn't sure what our ordinance was about the, the flags that fly. But he got, he was very much bothered by. We need to be crafty in our response because we may like some flags that, that say we're open or things like that, but the ordinance is very, very firm on no moving signage. And if we want to enforce the ordinance as written, you may, may include signs or, or flags that we like. So we Could shall have to be to very delicate on that. He was bothered by the ones that are tall. We may have to get to craft something that states a, a placement and height of those those exactly. uh, flags on the right. Right. I just can throw that out. No, no, those are all that's a that's a <coughs> ongoing list in, in my uh, on to do list. Content is a difficult issue as well. Yes. Yeah. Which was made more difficult by the Supreme Court last year. Um, I just want to thank staff for uh, doing a remarkable job um, cleaning up the debris that I left along the frontage of my home, uh, doing a lot of the landscaping in the last week or two, and uh, they've come back three times to, to get every bit of it, and so I want to thank them personally for doing a great job. And with that note, that some more of it came out today. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to mention one thing. There's going to be a program uh, next Thursday about frost. It's really good to hear what we know about frost as part of the conservation. Yes. Oh, yeah. Endangered frog species in Chatham County. Mm -hmm. I don't have anything I think of talking up about the streets and all that, especially H7. Very concerned about that. And also, I just want to mention the, that the homeowners will be. That would be a major concern as well. Did you build that roof? They, because we were having problems even trying to do a sidewalk over there. Because a lot of, some of the homeowners didn't even want that. So we would have to certainly keep that in mind. Um, yeah, this is belated appreciation, but I, I uh, Manager Drew's back, I'd like to express appreciation for the lines that. Uh, you've managed to get painted over at the uh, Chatham Mill as a part of uh, our new professional office space. Um, and uh, also I've been noticing uh, some new pavement 
patches going in around town. Greatly appreciative of that. Some potholes getting addressed. Um, and uh, and I want to uh, apologize for my absence last uh, week before last, but um, in reading up, the thing that I most wanted to chime in on was the kiosks. And uh, I'm, I'm actually really enthusiastic about the idea that the Boy Scouts might be able to step up, and um, that's that's a great thing um, because I think that uh, our, our town. Viewscape, viewshed would would improve by having some kiosks. I think there might be a need for more than one in the, in the park. Um, and um, oh, there was another item I neglected to make note of it. I'm very glad that uh, we've taken action on the House Bill 2 law resolution. Um, and should have written it down. It's gone. Thank you. Get a few balls. Too many, too many balls. Too many balls juggling. I, I saw John Petit today, yesterday, and thanked him. It was just amazing how quickly Beck Street, the one opposite the post office, mm -hmm. that that dip was was severely injuring the fronts of cars and um, and a day or two after our meeting it was it was fixed and John said it was the luck of the Irish in a sense that they already had a paper coming through town and he stopped and did it so that was most of all thank you is uh, anything else then we'll entertain a motion to adjourn so move. second stand adjourned Thank you.